It's been a year since protests erupted across Iran. The world was watching at the time, and this is why you shouldn't look away now. First, let's go back to the death of Masa Amini in the custody of Iran's so-called morality police, arrested for wearing her hijab or headscarf too loosely. Outraged Iranians took to the streets for months, a movement led by women and young people. Their demands for women's freedom and democratic change met with a brutal crackdown. Hossein Nouri Niku was there. Regime security forces, he says, fired on protesters, hitting him in the eye with lead pellets. 25 years old, he's now partially blind. I am full of rage that the Islamic Republic clings to power, he tells me. But the anger is stronger than ever. And for certain, this government will fall. Maybe, but not yet. Still, look closely at the streets of Tehran now. Emboldened by the protests, more women are rejecting the headscarf, going about their daily lives without it, even though that's still very much illegal. They can't impose it like before, the student says. The number of people who don't obey is too high now. The new phase of the revolution is women practicing their civil disobedience. Masi Alinejad is a well-known activist who fled Iran during unrest in 2009. I don't think that we need to see people in the street. We need to see bloodshed in the street to understand that the uprising is still on. But none of this means a loosening up from Iran's clerical rulers. Ahead of the protest anniversary, they've been cracking down again. Dozens of women's rights activists, even relatives of protesters who were killed, have been arrested in recent weeks. Businesses supporting optional hijab have been harassed by authorities. Surveillance cameras have been installed to identify unveiled women, these two attacked by a man dumping yogurt on them. And the morality police, after a while laying low, they're back on patrol. Iran is also getting ready to harden its religious laws with the so-called hijab and chastity bill, denounced by the UN as gender apartheid. For those women not wearing their headscarves, it could mean up to 10 years in prison. There's this kind of renewed conflict or renewed crackdown from the state in response to this ongoing civil disobedience. What would you say about that? I believe the regime is desperate. They're losing control, and that's why they're trying to use restrictive laws and punish women more. Iran was once a secular society before the Islamic Revolution of 1979. Since then, there have been waves of protests against the regime and its strict interpretation and enforcement of Islam. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Moral Karimi wrote a book on Iran's Green Movement, a mass protest in 2009 in response to a disputed presidential election. There is um, quite a, a cynical way of looking at this, and it would be there were months and months of protests, and here we are a year later, the regime still exists. It might not have uh, changed the regime as many hoped for last year. However, it's slowly building up the resistance in the society that's how lasting change, in my belief, happens. Despite everything, part of what gives activists that hope is that the woman life freedom protests, as they became known, were the largest in more than a decade, bringing together more sections, they say, of Iranian society. They also inspired solidarity rallies around the world. Women cutting their hair, an act of protest to support those risking their lives in Iran. Something has broken uh, the fear and the silence uh, of, of the people. Sharzard Mojab was an activist in Tehran in the early days of the Islamic Republic. 
what kind of emotions does this anniversary bring up for you and this ongoing struggle that you've been a part of for so long? This movement has revived me, revived my hope. It's a very important global event that uh, we cannot ignore. The protests were about women's rights abuses and so much more. There's a lot for Iranians to be angry about. An economy in shambles and getting worse, a growing climate crisis, their country isolated, and harsher laws on the horizon. All these potential sparks remain a year later, and more mass protests could be just a matter of time. The next phase of the revolution uh, is when people are getting ready to get back to the streets. And trust me, next wave will be much heavier.